Yeah. Well, of course, with the recent strike action we're seeing in South Africa, once again, we've got the spotlight on remuneration practices and trends where just this week we had Patrick Craven in studio saying that we face a situation where inflationary increases alone for your bottom earners are certainly not going to close that gap between your low and your high paid earners. Just how much of a gap are we looking at and is it widening? Yeah, currently at the moment, our gap that we've measured at the end of April is around, if I just take the total, if we were comparing total cost to company, it's around just over 100 times. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's across all industries and uh, across the entire, and entire all the employers. The JSC alone is probably slightly greater than that. As I said, you know, uh, companies are increasingly being scrutinized and challenged when they pay executive directors about what they're getting paid more, uh, you know, more to the point. To what degree has corporate governance actually taken effect here? No, corporate governance, no doubt, not only in South Africa, but again globally, has had an impact on, on executive remuneration. The trends have gone the right way, even though even now, as we've reported, some significant increases in executive remuneration. If we look at the structure and the framework around executive remuneration, most employers have complied in terms of long-term incentives, particularly short-term incentives, the whole structure around that has complied with corporate governance. Let's take a look at the structure. I mean, what, what are some of the factors that uh, companies now need to take into consideration with specifically King 3 coming to the fore? Well, King 3 and more recently, of course, the Companies, companies Act. Act. So yeah. even more, another devil in the detail now. Um, but I think large, if you take a CEO, for example, a JSC, his mix is about 40%, let's call it base pay, 30% long-term and 30% short term. Mm -hmm. So most of the emphasis in the last 12 months has been around the short term, tightening up a short term deferral in terms of requested by King 3, um, looking more around quantum and measuring the metrics and the performance related to that. Long term incentives have been around for the last probably three years and we've seen a lot of focus around that, the introduction of performance conditions, etc. So I think as I sit at the moment, long term incentives, most employers have complied with what's expected around uh, uh, corporate governance. But the focus at the moment moving a little bit shifted to the short term. We've seen some big quantum payouts on the short term. Um, and of course, the base pay, we've seen the, the, the pay gap is, remains an issue. Of course, uh, you know, effectively what we're doing is encouraging businesses to link remuneration uh, policy to business strategy. How would you rate South Africa Inc.'s proactivity in this, uh, in this regard? In fact, very well. I think most of them have taken it, even prior to the King 3 coming in, even though we didn't have to apply King 3, the majority of listed entities did start making um, efforts to comply with King 3. Now King 3 is applied, then of course the Companies Act has been introduced. So now we'll watch to see how we'll deal with and cope with the, the Companies Act. Companies Act largely deals with disclosure. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, um, a mindset that more disclosure is required. Um, I believe it's slightly the opposite. I think it's not more disclosure, it's more adequate disclosure. More adequate disclosure. What about the step that some companies have taken where they've started to introduce you know, a shareholder vote on remuneration. Is that a right step to be taken? Well, if people don't realize that in fact South Africa's moved ahead of the world, now with the company act as it is, we've actually elders now have a casting vote on, on remuneration. Unlike, for example, even in the US where it is still a non-binding advisory vote, as King 3 had put it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see in our round of AGMs coming up now in terms of to what extent we're going to see active shareholderism take place around executive remuneration. Obviously with all of this, we're looking at this being more more than just a case of closing that gap between low earners and your high paid earners. Yeah. So what exact, what exactly, what end are we looking at here? I don't think much is around the gap. The gap is a, is a bit of a misnomer. I think because they're measuring internal equity, what we're looking for is companies to focus on the internal companies, not necessarily that has to be disclosed. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit against disclosing the, um, the, 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 the pay gap um, for the one that it creates a lot of um, uh, Un unintended consequences, probably to best put. Um, however, I'd be disappointed if companies aren't taking heed of the, 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 the pay gap. Whereas on the other side, I think King 3 and the Companies Act is looking more around the framework of, of how we pay. Are we paying executives the, uh, in, in the right a framework of, of earnings. Especially where you've got companies needing to contend with fighting for skills. So how does that work 
onto that agenda. Well, that's quite interesting because it's the first time now in our publication we've actually understood, we've investigated the profile of executive directors. Mm -hmm. And we've now seen there are 1,146 executive directors. And if you look at our, our, our sister publication, the non-execs, they're just over 2,000. So if you look, now the question is, well, what is the right mix? Globally, that mix is three executives to seven non-execs. So depending which way you want to do that maths formula, um, it either tells us we've got too many execs or we've got too few non-execs. Uh, my view is probably too few non-execs. So at the moment, there, so there's definitely still a talent shortage in South Africa. That's what I was trying to get. To. Uh, obviously, it's all in a bid to make companies and South Africa incorporated a little bit more competitive within a global arena. And when it comes to that discussion on South Africa's <coughs> ability to compete, a lot of emphasis over recent discussions has been placed on productivity. How Correct. do we get remuneration to incentivize and grow productivity levels? Largely that's through, not necessarily the, the quantum or the remuneration, probably more around creating employment. I think we want to be seen, employers want to be seen as, as going forward, being a global competitor and at the same time creating employment, not being the opposite. Some of the challenges that companies face going down this road and, uh, this road and changing. Absolutely. And I think also, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, at the current market at the moment, our executives, South Africa's um, companies at the moment are high target entities at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and hence, also, our executives are quite uh, vulnerable at the moment. Well, let's leave